In Pingthan, three buildings were enveloped by the strictest security. Men entered and left there through a tunnel, usually at night. Hundreds of prisoners were directed to Pingthan. So-called spies who'd allegedly poisoned the wells, Chinese, Korean, Manchurian and Russian soldiers, petty criminals and dissidents. Ishi gave these men a code name, Marutas. Literally, it means logs of wood. They were known only by numbers. They were to die painfully and anonymously in their thousands, sacrificed in a series of human experiments. In a graveyard in Tokyo, there stands a memorial. A memorial not to those who died at the hand the most secret records as he printed them. Uh, there was a standing order that there should be 60 to 80 marutas in the unit at all times, so facilities were large enough to accommodate that number. There was a maruta supply camp, and replacements came as those in the unit died. To the best of my knowledge, the number of prisoners called marutas sacrificed there up until the end of the war was 2,500 to 3,000. Naoka Ishibashi, now a caretaker, was servant to a senior officer in Unit 731. He also had a more sinister duty. My job was to ensure that Marutas were fit for experimentation, and I had to give them health checks on arrival, which included taking their blood count, ensuring healthy kidney function, and so on. The number of Marutas arriving at any one time was usually five or six but they were not used immediately for experiments because basic examination had to be completed before this could be done. Sometimes Unit 731 cooperated with other units. This man agreed to talk anonymously about one such joint operation. We experimented with cyanide gas in small bombs. Nearly 100 Maruta were used in the experiment and they all died but for one. The bodies were loaded into trucks, 10 or 20 at a time, and transported to Haruarushan, where tents had been erected for a pathologist to carry out a pathological autopsy. I waited outside the tent to obtain the blood that had been recovered from various organs of the autopsies and placed in tubes, and took these to the military hospital in Hera, and assessed the cyanide content of the blood. The prisoners were killed to assess the progress of various diseases. They were shot or injected with morphine. Some were dissected while they were still alive. In Ishii's eyes, the human experiments had been justified to protect the Japanese troops from germ warfare. But all along, he'd also been developing germ warfare as an attacking weapon. US intelligence documents reveal that he built both bombs and shells filled with germs. But when this bomb exploded, the charge was so great, it destroyed much of the bacteria. He tried a balloon bomb, but its fuse was unreliable, and it failed to explode at the altitude that would have spread the germs most effectively. Next, Ishii invented this bomb, the Uji bomb. It was made of ceramic, so that the charge to break the casing could be small. But the fins were unreliable. The bombs were tested on experimental stations near Ping Fan. Here, they exploded both bombs and shells near prisoners they'd staked out in a huge open field. 